Hey, what's going on? It's Bill Burr, and it's time for the Thursday afternoon, just before Friday, Monday morning podcast. You know what? Fuck this fucking podcast. I swear to God, I, my fucking stupid ass fucking thing never fucking works. For, I, I got to record it on my phone. This fucking thing, the computer, it, it has like an echo voice. I can't get rid of it, and I can't even forward the fucking shit that I did. So I got to start all over again. I don't have the fucking time to do it. I just don't, I just don't, I I swear to God, this fucking technology shit, how does it make your life easier? I literally, every fucking thing, before you go to bed, you got to fucking spend $700 on fucking electricity, making sure every fucking thing is charged, or you can't record, you can't fucking do anything. Look at this fucking shit. This isn't even a podcast, you're just listening to me losing my fucking mind about the nine millionth time. And now my fucking laptop, which I only got a year and a half ago, it's already starting to slow down. You know? It's already starting to fucking slow down. Oh, yeah, it's obsolete. Is it, you fucking Apple cunts? Do you think there's ever going to be a time when any sort of politician grows some fucking balls and the general population gets their fucking heads out of their asses and they stop rooting for Republicans and Democrats and realize... That these fucking stupid ass, spineless fucking politicians who only give a fuck about whatever golden parachute they're going to get from the corporate cunt that's fucking paying them to push whatever agenda they have through the fucking machine. Oh, I'm on a rant here. You know, somebody just told me why L.A. L.A. has like the most expensive fucking real estate. I guess we just surpassed San Francisco. Somehow a city with no fucking water supply is global warming is, is every fucking is, is, is going to destroy this place. For some reason, nobody I know can afford a fucking house out here anymore. And it's, they finally just said there's corporation groups out here that are just buying up houses for cash to then turn around and rent them. So basically they'll outbid any normal fucking person out here. So essentially... The last part of the American dream, being able to own a house, is going to go away. And these politicians are just going to sit back and let them fucking do it. Because the same fucking corporation that's buying up all of those houses is going to fucking line the pockets of these fucking piece of shit politicians. They're all fucking scumbags. Every fucking one of them. Unless, you know, you know, you know, you realize a politician isn't a scumbag. He's called this. He's immediately branded a socialist or a communist. If he wants to do anything, anything for the people, if he wants to fucking, you know, take on the bankers and have them be fucking accountable. If he wants to do anything on that fucking, oh, this guy's a fucking socialist. And all you fucking mouth breathing morons. Believe it. You know what I really enjoy? Actually, the fact that they shit on communism and they act like capitalism is working. Like capitalism works. That we we are we are so fucking broke. It doesn't even like every August, no one pays attention to it. All of the politicians just sit around going, like, is this it? Is this the end of the country? And at the last second they go, ah, print more money. Right? And then everything, why is it like fucking nine fifty for a one slice of bread? <laughs> I'll tell you why. It's cause that guy doesn't have on the right colored tie. Oh sorry. All right, I'm done. Let's get back to bread and circus. We'll talk about how well the Boston Bruins are playing. I just can't fucking believe it, man. I just cannot fucking believe, you know, I went out here, I got this fucking set up out here in my garage. Everything's all fucking set up. And you just think like, okay, I'm good. I'm good. Nope. Nope. You're not good. You're not fucking good. You know what? You're never going to be good. It's never going to fucking work. This fucking thing has worked 20% of the fucking time since I've had it. You know, and then for some reason I have a charger for the fucking the, 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 the hard drive fucking part of it, but I don't have, no, I have one for the keyboard, but not for the mouse. It's the same fucking cord. So now I got to go out and go buy another fucking cord, right? So I can fucking plug that fucking thing and make sure everything's all fucking charged up. And then you know what happens? You know what happens? The fucking power goes out. The whole thing gets wiped clean. And then I got to sit around. I got to fucking start all over again with this thing. Fuck this thing. 
Fuck all of this. Unfucking believable. Unbelievable. Yeah, so that's what they're doing now. Corporations are buying up houses. Corporations are buying up houses so the regular Joe can't buy a fucking house. And guess what? Republicans don't care. Democrats don't care. Nobody fucking cares. None of them give a fuck. All they want is their house in Martha's Vineyard or their fucking aquifers in the South, South America. That's all they give a fuck about. They're in it for themselves. We had some fucking rich cunt out here running for fucking office. and Everybody thought that he was going to be the savior. People are so dumb. It's like the guy's a real estate developer. He spends $100 million of his own money to get a job that pays two hundred fifty grand a year. And everybody, oh, it's because he likes L.A. that much. Jesus, wake the fuck up. <laughs> He's spending $100 million so he can give his own company $4 billion in real estate jobs. Well, you know, those jobs are going to create other jobs. Oh, Jesus Christ. No, they're going to grossly underpay you. And then the corporation itself is going to go out and buy houses and outbid you in cash. So how do you fight back against it? You know what? Don't sell your house to a corporation. How about that? How about that? How about you do one for the regular guy? And you take the offer from the hard work. And you're not going to do it. You're not going to do it because that, that's how capitalism works. Fuck everybody else below me. I'm getting mine. That's how it fucking works. And it doesn't fucking work. Communism doesn't. None of them work. None of them work because all forms of government are run by human beings. And we're all fucking flawed. That's what it is. And you know who you can blame? You can blame God for that because that's how he makes people. He takes every, each and every one of us out of the oven too early. And then we come down here and we're all fucked up and we just do crazy shit. I think he just sits back and fucking enjoys it. All right. So fuck every religion and all your dumb songs to this invisible guy who didn't make you right to begin with. That's how fucked up you are. You're actually singing songs to somebody who, made, who did a bad job on you. Ugh. This is how far I take it. This is how far I take my little podcast studio not running, not working the way that I want it to work. And it, maybe if I took fucking 10 minutes and slow down my scatterbrain. I could actually learn how it worked. And I could maybe, you know, charge my mouse and fucking figure it out, you know, and not have this psycho echo on my voice. And, and I don't even know what. Why doesn't it interest me? I have absolutely no interest in any of that shit. Laptops, iPhones, all of this shit, but all of the world runs on them. So I have to interact with them. And I'll tell you this, dude, if I see that fucking robot going down the street one more time, I just like, I, I literally watched this old guy having to slow down and speed up his gate. This homeless guy trying to get around this robot as the robot was trying to negotiate the fucking uneven sidewalks. And he's already like subservient to the thing. He's treating it like it's a person. You're like, well, hey, you know, I don't want to bump into this. This is somebody else's property and blah, 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 blah. You know? And when you look at those two things, you know, that other person actually has empathy, unlike that fucking toaster rolling down the fucking street. But the toaster doesn't want to be part of a union and doesn't want weekends and holidays off. So that fucking nice guy, is, he's going to become extinct. That's what's going to happen. Maybe that's what I'll do. I'll just enjoy, you know, these rich cunts. It's just, I don't know. You know, another thing too is I had a really good friend of mine die. Um, I got to give a shout out to Diana Linden, um, who was, remember when I, if I ever talked about how I had this Jedi masseuse. She got rid of my sciatic nerve problems. She, my back was all twisted. My shoulders were up, ro rotator cup, frozen shoulder, all of that. She got rid of all of that. The quality of life that I got because she was an absolute Jedi next level um, masseuse who just did everything for everybody else and, you know, always put everybody before herself. She just was an amazing person and she passed away uh, yesterday 
at the ripe old age of 75. I know what you're thinking. You're thinking like your, your masseuse was 75, strong like bull. Oh my God, her fucking elbow. She'd have me coming up off the table because I, I mean, I literally came in there maybe having gotten five half-ass massages in my life. I came in with like almost half a century of problems and she gradually undid all of them. Most of which that if I went to a doctor, they would have they operated on my back or my shoulders and all of that shit. <clears throat> you know, they staple your fucking rotator cuffs back to get all of this shit that they do or whatever. She was able to um, work all of that out. Everybody told me I was going to have sciatic nerve problems for the rest of my life. And uh, I didn't because of her and her wonderful work. And unfortunately, she passed away yesterday. So rest in peace, Diana. Um, I love you. You were the best. Thank you for everything you did for me. And you made my life, the quality of my life. I'll be forever thankful to you. Um, anyway, so I went to a, um, a premiere of, um, the, uh, the Mandalorian on uh Tuesday. They showed us the first two episodes of this season and I think all you Star Wars freaks are going to be more than happy. I can tell you that. Um, I will tell you, Star Wars fans are fucking cool. You know what I mean? Their energy. Like when you go down there, they're really polite. They're kind of quiet and a little awkward. It is just the exact opposite energy that I get when I meet the usual sports fan who's a meathead like me. It's like they're like loud, aggressive <laughs> Yeah, Star Wars fans are like, hey, uh, Mr. Pur, uh, I just, I don't want to bother you. I, I really enjoy what you work on The Mandalorian. I'm like, oh, thanks a lot. I really appreciate it. <laughs> you know? and, they, and then they reach behind themselves like Bugs Bunny and pull out like a Mandalorian helmet. Like, where the fuck did that come from? And then sports fans, oh, they'll, they'll, they'll be like driving by, by and go, hey, Billy Fat Tits, go fuck yourself. <laughs> Do you know how many times that has happened to me? When, and there's been other people on the sidewalk and they'll just hear somebody like insult the shit out of me and tell me to go fuck myself. And then I turn around and I go, hey, how you doing? Thank you. <laughs> it's kind of my favorite thing. I was actually, um, I had an acting gig one time. I forget which one I was, whatever the fuck one. I don't even know where the hell I was. I was in some city. And like for the third time on the shoot, like somebody had driven by and yelled and told me to go fuck myself. I turned around and waved. And the actress that I was working with just started laughing. And she goes, she goes, is that how your fans like your, f <laughs> your fans love you, but they say really mean stuff to you. I was like, yeah, I know, I know. I kind of, uh, kind of created that culture on my podcast. And it just became like this running joke. And then people on the set say, hey, Bill, go fuck yourself. And I'd be like, hey, good morning. <laughs> um, anyway, here's something else that I learned that I'm trying to learn. Is, um, you know, like most comedians or performers, I have this crushing need to be liked. And um, I never really examined it. And I, n I now realize that, you know, it just comes from, you know, Hey, if somebody likes me, then they're not going to hurt me, you know, like that type of shit. So it's, uh, it's actually a weakness. So I'm trying to get rid of that. And, I, and I'm really starting to be okay with like, if somebody doesn't like me, I'm just, rather than walking around muttering about them, I'm just going to be like, well, you know, not everybody's going to like you. I mean, that's what I do with jokes. That's what I do with anything I've done on TV or any like this couple of movie things I've done. That's just how, you know, not everybody's going to like it. But if enough people, like when people, um, it took me a while. Like, you know, you'd put out a special, you know, 10 people. Ah, that was great. One people, that fucking sucked. Don't quit your day. And they just focus on that. I kind of learned to do that with like stand up and shit. Like, all right, well, I mean, you know, if 10 out of 11 people like it, I'm fucking killing it. <clears throat> so I have to do that with... Uh, I got to do that with people. And, you know, because if I get like a weird vibe from somebody, I used to like, you know, all right, well, then I'll fucking give you a weird vibe back. 
And then I'm going to drive around in my car and say all this stuff, fantasizing that I'm winning this fucking argument. And like the person isn't even there. I'm by myself. It's like, it's literally insane. So <clears throat> now I'm just, I'm just going to be like, all right, you don't like me. That's, that's... Hey, I get it. <laughs> I don't like me either. Um, yeah, so that's, that's, that's my, my, my next, my next thing. And, and I mean the real deal because I can handle anything in this business, somebody not liking me, but show business is, is not real. I mean, it is real, but it's, it's just bullshit show. I mean the real deal, like in life. Um, you know, I'm, I'm just like, all right, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm good with that shit, you know? I'm not good with it. Obviously, I'm not good with it. I wouldn't be talking about it, but I, I need to like fucking learn how to do that. So recently, you know, I ran into somebody and just their vibe was just fucking weird. And then I just sit there and take all of it on that it's got to be something that I'm doing or whatever. And I was just like, you know, I don't, what, why the fuck do I know what's going on in their life? I will literally invent an entire fucking scenario in my head. And if you're sitting right now and you're listening to it going like, this guy is fucking nuts. Yeah, I am. I am fucking nuts. Human beings are not, we're all mentally ill on some fucking level. It's just, it's like being like a functional alcoholic because I'm not outside, you know, yelling at a stop sign. I'm all right, you know? I'm a fucking solid guy. You know, meanwhile, I'm in my car arguing with somebody who pissed me off 40 years ago, right? And then like, just imagine that brain running a nation. <laughs> There's no way, they, they all do it. Just think about that. Just picture, just picture every fucking president walking around in their, in their boxers, that little stupid presidential seal on it so they can feel special as they help drive the fucking, steer the ship into the fucking rocks. Just picture them talking to themselves. You know, Joe Biden, Jesus Christ, you can't even, that guy's like, that guy should be in a home. You know, Donald Trump, you know, he, can't you just picture that guy walking around eating f McDonald's fries out of a big bag but by himself? No, I never did it better. You, you are the greatest. You are the greatest president that he was mentally ill. You know? Obama's mentally ill, right? He, you talk like somebody pulled a string on the side of his neck. Um, George W. Bush, out of his fucking mind. <laughs> lunatic, fucking lunatic. Bill Clinton, oh, so, oh, fucking lunatic, fucking lunatic. George Herbert Walker Bush, war hero. Flew fucking missions at 18 years of age where his roommate wouldn't even come back and he had to shake that off and he was painted as weak. Handled Saddam Hussein without getting us into a never-ending fucking war. Ronald Reagan, former actor, you know. I love how he gets credit for defeating communism. It's like it still exists. Russia still exists. There's still a problem. Yeah, but he, he fucking stopped him for a couple of years, though, didn't he? It's like it's not over. It's 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 like Ohio State versus Michigan State. The game is played every year. It's not the game isn't over. And that's that. Um Jimmy Carter. Jimmy Carter. He's a peanut farmer. You know he was talking to himself in the fields, but that fucking guy. That guy was the the greatest human being that's been president since I was president. Joe Ford was all right. Nixon was a paranoid lunatic which is a fucking shame because he would have won the election anyway. And he had a brilliant mind for foreign policy. And then I don't know about anybody before that. Then I was too fucking young. Lunatics. 
right? My podcast setup didn't work today. So I've attacked God and every standing president <laughs> back to Lyndon Johnson. Um, I love that he grew his hair out in the end. Well, you know what to say. You can't wait and rejoin him. Uh, someday I'm going to post that. I'm going to be able to, I'm going to save that first five minutes. I had this echo, this reverb, and I sang the summer wind. I gave a halftime speech as a coach of a team that did not do well in the first half. I, I, I had a fucking ball. Um, anyway, I do the reads here, but nothing of that. Why don't I, you know, every night I sit there and I think to myself, you know, you should charge all your shit, Bill. You should fucking charge it, but I don't do it. I don't do it. And then I have the nerve to fucking flip out. All right, let's do this thing. Oh, look who it is. Rocket money. Rocket money. Fly into your pockets away from the bankers. The average person has 12 paid subscriptions. Think about that. Pause for two seconds. And if you think... Oh, sorry. <clears throat> I started the note wrong and I just went in, into the woods. <clears throat> If you think you're only subscribed to a handful of services, well, you might want to double check. With Rocket Money, you can quickly identify and cancel. Oh, Jesus, the white ladies are perking up. We get to cancel something? All of your unwanted subscriptions. Rocket Money, formerly known as Truebill, is a personal finance app that finds and cancels your unwanted subscriptions, monitors your spending, and helps you lower your bills all in one place. Over 80% of people have subscriptions they forgot about. How about a shout out for those 20%? Huh? The people that are on the ball, the misers. That's what you call somebody that actually is good with money. You fucking miser. Um, you know, because what are you going to do? Admit that they're better at it than you are? That's not a human thing to do. Um... What the hell is it? The average person, 80, uh, like that streaming service you bought to watch just one show or that free trial that you never even used. Yeah, and then it rolled into a subscription. Rocket Money will quickly eat and easily identify your subscriptions for you so you can stop paying for the ones you don't want. Simply find the subscription you don't want and press cancel. And Rocket Money will cancel it for you. No more long hold times. No more hiccups during the read. Why do I have hiccups? Um, With customer service or tedious emailing back and forth, all of that crap, you don't have to deal with it. You just hit cancel. And Rocket Money makes canceling subscription as easy as a click of a button. Over 3 million people have used Rocket Money. Fuck. Sorry, um, I have the silent hiccups. Saving the average person up to $720 a year. Stop throwing your money away, you son of a bitch. Cancel unwanted subscriptions and manage your expenses the easy way by going to rocketmoney.com slash burr. That's rocketmoney.com slash burr, rocketmoney.com slash burr. Rocket is spelled R-O-C-K-E-T, all right? Just for you poison fans out there who've been looking at Ricky Rocket's name for so long, you forgot how to spell it. Um, rig it, rig it, rock it, R-I-K-K-I-R-O-K-K-E-T-T, maybe? All the double letters, were double letters big in the 80s? Let's see here, R-I-K-K-I-R-O, oh, Ricky Rocket, R-I-K-K-I-R-O-C-K, oh, rock, E-T-T, Ricky Rocket, and he's rocking it, he's rocking the drums, you get it? You know, I saw him, I stood, I stood on the side of the stage and I saw him on that tour with Motley Crue, Def Leppard, and Joan Jett. And uh, I got to tell you, that he's a big guy, like a tall fucking dude, way bigger than I thought. Um, a fantastic fucking drummer. By the way, somebody sent me a, um, somebody sent me a link of John Bonham's drums isolated um, on a uh, whole lot of love. Holy shit. I mean, the guy is yelling when he does fills. 
it was bones, cats, bones, bones, bad bones, but we go down the fucking drums. It was like, how did that not get into the mix? Just completely immersed in what he was doing. Any sort of self-consciousness or anything, just out the fucking window. Um, I will I will tell you this, though. <clears throat> I was of the belief that Ginger Baker was just a cunt and that was it. You know, and there was all this talk about what a fucking great drummer he was and all of that shit. And I would listen to the Cream stuff and I would be like, all right. I mean, I love Cream. They're a great group, but I would listen to him playing and I was just like, I don't understand what the what all of his fucking yammering on about, about how fucking great he is. And um, yeah, I, I wasn't even a fan. So the other day I'm at the gym and they had this drum solo was playing and I finally I was like, who the fuck is this? This guy's unbelievable. And it was Cream. It was a live version of that solo, Toad. And I was listening to it and I was like, all right, okay, I get it now. I get it. I mean, I don't think that he, he should have gone at John Bonham and say that he couldn't swing a sack of shit. But I don't think that that, which is still, I can't say that without laughing. Right, John Bonham couldn't swing a sack of shit. <laughs> I mean, that was like a comedian. You know, when you watch a comedian making fun of shit, you're not supposed to make fun of. Like, you're not supposed to make fun of John Bonham, especially as a drummer. And for him to just fucking talk about him like... <laughs> You know, he was like some dad drummer like me going to Guitar Center. Right, John Bonham couldn't swing a sack of shit. John Bonham couldn't swing a sack of shit. <laughs> I remember I actually got invited to go see a screening of that. And when I saw him say that, I almost fell out of my chair laughing. At first, there was the shock. And then I was just like, oh, my God, that's fucking amazing. It's amazing that he said that because you're not supposed to say that. No one has ever said that publicly. Um, although Keith Richards kind of trashed him. He kind of trashed Led Zeppelin. You could tell he never even listened to the group either because he goes, Led Zeppelin, he goes, aptly named because they never got off the ground. Like, it's like, yeah, Keith, that was the joke. They deliberately were making fun of themselves naming. <laughs> and he goes, because they never got off the ground. And he's making this, these eyes like, mm, ooh, very observant, Keith. Um, so anyway, I actually, when I watch that now, you know, having begun to pick apart my fucking diseased brain, I'm just looking at this guy going, oh, this guy was unbelievably insecure. This is all basic psych 101 stuff and incredibly jealous. <clears throat> I would think as the years went by and Bonham just became more and more of a god, um, and less and less people, I think, you know, we're talking about him in comparison. I think that that sort of built up. I got to be honest with you. Ginger Baker was not good for gingers. <laughs> <laughs> he kind of fed into all the stereotypes. You know, we got the red hair. We got a temper. We're, you know, we're the devil. Um we're not human. You should kick us in the leg, you know, on a special day every fucking year. He kind of like, yeah, he didn't, he, he really didn't do us. He did us a disservice. But I will tell you this, though. So. I did see him play a drum solo when they, they got together, uh, when they reformed. Um, I, sh I don't know why I didn't see them and I didn't go see the police. Like, they're never going to get back together. Now, like, you know, Eric Clapton's the only one left in Cream. Um... I don't know why I never fucking saw those guys. You know why? I'll tell you why I never saw them. You know why? Because I'm tired. That's literally the reason I didn't go see all those great artists. I was, I'm at the age, I'm just too fucking tired. To, you know, back in the day, you had to go down to the record store and stand in line to get tickets. I can't even open a fucking laptop because God knows I didn't charge the fucking thing to just go out and buy some goddamn tickets. Um... So I'm out here in my little garage podcast studio. Look at, look at all of this shit. I have like, 
three different things to carry cigars around. I'm, this, this little ledge here is going to be, and I got boxes of cigars on top of my fridge that people, you know, have given me and all of that shit. I'm getting rid of all of this fucking shit. I, I kind of have an urge to do that. Um, let's see if I do it. I'm definitely doing it with the cigars, but I have an, I have an entire bookshelf of fucking books. Um, it's like, what am I going to read them again? I got to get rid of this shit. Although I do have a good one here. John Bonham by Mick Bonham. I mean, how do you throw that out? I mean, that's his brother. I can't throw that one out. You want to hear my books? I'm dying up here to be the man. You got to beat the man. The Ric Flair autobiography, Led Zeppelin. When Giants Walk the Earth, Rocks, Joe Perry Autobiography, Dirty Deeds, the ACDC. This is some fucking heavy reading here, people. Steven Adler's Autobiography. (laughs) The Beastie Boy book. Texas Flood, the Stevie Ray Vaughan story. Bill Walsh, Finding the Winning Edge. It was a gift somebody gave (laughs) me. Led Zeppelin, 1975, New Orleans sports. I, what the fuck did I, I got the history of the AFL. I got a Bobby Orr book. I mean, you would think that I was in the seventh grade. Uh, not a lot of heavy lifting on that shelf, huh? You could pick that whole bookshelf up with the books by yourself in your 80s. I got a book on all the old baseball stadiums. I'm keeping that one. I have my map. My Rand McNally map from when I was a fucking road comic before all of this GPS shit. I got a bunch of football cards. What the fuck is wrong with me? All right, that's it. That's the podcast. Go fuck yourselves. Enjoy the music. Have a great weekend, you cunts. And I'll see you on Monday. Hey, what's going on? (laughs) It's Bill Byrne. It's the Monday morning podcast. Sorry, for the fucking March 2nd. I got to tell you something. Oh, I'm coming out of the gate this week, people. I just fucking, I just did like eight minutes. A great fucking eight minutes. A great fucking riff. The whole goddamn thing. And then I look down and the fucking goddamn stupid ass fucking thing isn't even on. You know why? This is the exact same fucking device. I had the Olympus LS10. Now it's the Olympus 14. And wouldn't you fucking know? They couldn't just leave well enough alone. They got to add like 20 fucking steps and some stupid broad's fucking voice in there telling me what I know I'm doing. So I fucking riff for like eight fucking minutes and I find out the thing isn't even fucking recording. I I fucking, I hate technology, okay? I absolutely, I don't understand why do we keep going forward, all right? We got enough shit. This is as comfortable as it's going to fucking get. Why can't we just have the shit and this is how it fucking works? And when you figure something out, that's, you, you know how it fucking works. Jesus fucking Christ. I told you guys, and I fucking will never stop bitching about these things. I fucking uh, was talking on my podcast saying how, you know, I needed a new pair of fucking headphones one week, right? So uh, some fucking person who listens to the podcast ended up sending me a pair of fucking wireless fucking headphones wireless fucking headphones and i gotta tell you i've never had more fucking problems with something in my life you fucking sitting there my whole life headphones fucking work you plug them into something that's charged the headphones never the amount of fucking times i sat there with my phone listening to fucking music my phone is charged and then the headphones went out and i couldn't listen it's just fucking why did you add that step electronic pencil sharpeners and all that shit. And now it's just something that's going to fucking... It drives me up the... F- the other one, the other pencil sharpener, you could buy a pencil sharpener once and you, you could have that thing for 100 fucking years. And little kids could walk up and be like, oh, this, this, this was my grandfather's. When he used to, you know, fucking sharpen pencils and, and when he built stuff. When we still had good wood in this country, right? It wasn't all wet because it was brand new fucking trees. It was old shit. Oh, my God. I was in such a great fucking mood. It's completely changed the whole fucking vibe of this goddamn thing. Anyways, let me relax. Calm down. Let me try to get back to where I was. I was in such a fucking great mood because I'm back out here in Los (laughs) Angeles. Let me make sure this thing's recording. Let me make sure everything's okay. The goddamn nerve center here, you know? Fuck. Anyways, I'm back out here in L.A., 
it's so fucking awesome because I was just in New York City, right? I uh, I flew back there and I did night at too many fucking stars. And I got to tell you, that show lives up to its name. I was standing backstage in the green room and I couldn't believe how many people fucking came back there. John Bon Jovi, Steve Buscemi, Chris Rock, Louis C.K., on and on and on and on and on. I think one of the guys with the long hair, I think he might have been the keyboard player for Bon Jovi. I don't know who the fuck he was. It was amazing, right? I had my autograph book out. No, I'm kidding. Anyways, uh, Will Forte, I got to uh, got to talk to him. And, uh, you know, that guy's one of my favorites. And last night I actually watched his uh, his new show, Last Man on Earth. And it's so fucking funny. It's just, uh, God damn it. I, I said such nice things on it the last fucking time, you know. Now I'm just trying to remember what the fuck I said. Because of this stupid ass fucking recorder. Let me just fucking just speak from the heart here. Like that guy is so fucking original. And he, he commits so hard to everything he does. I'm such a fucking huge fan of his. And uh, I talked to him briefly backstage. I'm going to try to get him on the podcast. I just want to find out how the fuck he got something this original on a major network. They usually freak the fuck out. Like they always say they want to do something new. You know, they always say they want to do something new. But in the end, you know, they fucking cut it down and everybody gives them shit. But I get it. I get it. You know what I mean? Everybody's brave with somebody else's fucking money. But when it's your money and your job on the line, you're going to go with what has worked in the past. <clears throat> I'm sorry, my voice is still cracking. So I get what the fuck they do. You know what I mean? I got, the, I got this whole new bit that I'm going to be doing about fatties and fucking ugly people who are bitch moaning and complaining that beautiful people are in movies. It's like, yeah, you know what? Why don't you go put your fucking million dollars up and go put some troll up there? I mean, give me a fucking break. It's what it is. Do you think I sit here wondering why, as a balding, redheaded male, I'm not a fucking love interest in a movie? I don't. I get it. You know why? Because if it was my fucking zillion dollars, I wouldn't cast me either. Everybody fucking bitch moaning and complaining. Get on a treadmill and shut the fuck up, all right? We're all out there eating salads. You think we want to do it? We don't. It's part of the fucking business. You know? Why don't they just slow down the fucking NBA and lower the rim so you can play in that too? It's fucking unreal. Anyways, let me plow ahead here. Oh, that's going to be a fun chunk of material. I got, I got, oh, Jesus Christ. I got a vent on that one tonight. I'm going up on fucking stage. I'm fucking talking about that. I can't wait. See that? That's me rubbing my hands together with a microphone in my hand. Anyways, Last Man on Earth is, uh, is absolutely, uh, you know, you know, when you're searching for a new show, I still been searching ever since Breaking Bad went off the air. You know what I mean? Just trying to, you know, I saw The Killing. Killing was great. Then I blew through that because it's fucking Netflix, right? They got all of them. They turn you into a junkie, right? Instead of just giving you a little bit a week and you keep your habit in control like the networks, fucking Netflix, you just sit there, you know, you'll lose a week of your life. Um, so anyways, I got to watch this and then I got I got to get caught up on uh, Better Call Saul because I was overseas when it came out and uh, I'm really bad with with, you know, looking shit up on the Internet and trying to find out where to watch it. I want to watch it legally. Um, if anybody knows where I can watch like the first two episodes, because I'm now taping the series. Um, really excited. But uh, I'm going to do one little spoiler thing on Last Man on Earth. All right. It's going to go down here in about two fucking. Well, I'll do the. It's going down right now. All right. So fucking stick your fingers in your. I'm going to time this out perfectly. Ten seconds. I'm going to say it. All right. In three, two, one. Kristen Schaal is also on it. She absolutely fucking kills it and blew me away with her acting. And I'm just so fucking psyched whenever I see a stand-up comic or comedians in general showing this industry that we are actually can really be good actors. They fucking kill it. I absolutely love the show. Please watch it. All right, done. Okay, anyways. Um, plowing ahead here. Uh, so, all right, I'm over the technology thing. I'm actually in such a fucking great mood. After being back in New York, uh, which I loved... You know, taking the subway and shit. I miss doing that stuff and seeing, you know, fucking neurotic people and crazy people. And uh, I don't know. You know what I miss most about living in L.A.? This is going to be weird. You know what I miss? Puerto Ricans. You know what I mean? They just don't have any Puerto Ricans out here. I don't know what it is. Not that there's anything wrong with Mexican people, but, you know, L.A. could use some Puerto Ricans. 
The fucking women are gorgeous. And I was on the subway or in a restaurant. I was like, God damn, look at her. And I was like, that's right. Puerto Rican women. <laughs> that's what's been missing from my day to day. Plus New York, you know what I mean? Not, everybody's not hiding in cars. You know, they're fucking on the subways and shit, walking down the street, bunch of cutie pies. I don't know. Anyways. So, but you know what I do love about living out here? I love when it's like the level that has been, that it has been snowing back on the East Coast to just drop into that and actually be excited to see snow, you know, skipping down the street, wanting to make a snowman and shit. And everybody else is totally miserable. There's nothing more fun. And everybody back East, you, you probably at this point, if you're, you know, over the age of 22 or 23, you have that douchebag East Coast friend that moved to Southern California or someplace warm. And you know what we do, right? You know what we do. We just wait for a couple to, we, we time it right. Not during the holidays. During the holidays, we're on radio silence because that's when we're missing the winter, right? All the fucking win, all the fucking Christmas songs are all about snow, right? Just hear those sleigh bells ring a ling, ting, ting, ting a ling, too. It's fucking snowing and ba 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 boo, right? Giddy up, giddy up, giddy up. Let's go. Let's look at the snow. Told you I was in a good mood. Oh, we're riding in a wonderland of snow. What the fuck? What the fuck? What the fuck? Bah, bah. You know, I wonder how Native Americans relate to that fucking Christmas music, right? As white people are sitting there saying, giddy up, giddy up, giddy up. Let's go. You used to live here. Then we committed fucking genocide. Yeah. Now we have a fucking house where you used to fucking live. Bop, 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 boop, 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 boop. You know, the nerve of us to write such happy songs on the same land that that fucking horror happened. <laughs> oh, you know, Dasher and Dancer and Prancer and Vixen. The Cherokee, the Sioux, the Crow, and Apache, where did they go? Um, anyways, uh, so you know the deal. So we love to fucking call up in January and February. The best time to do it is right at the end of January when these poor cunts back east know they got another month of this shit, right? It's just desolate, right? You've already the high of a new year. You've already fucked up your New Year's resolutions and you're just coming out, right, with your fucking ice scraper. <laughs> Every fucking goddamn morning. And then that's when we call. Acting like we don't know what we're doing. Hey! What's going on, dude? How are you? Yeah? How about them Bruins? They're starting to finally fucking play, you know? A seed or whatever. What? They got a rebuild kit. So, uh, you know, what's going on back there? Right? You do the whole fucking thing. Oh, Jesus, fuck us, blah, 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 blah. And then that's when you get the hit. Ah, oh, what, out here? Oh, yeah, it's, uh, yeah, I don't know. You know, I haven't looked. I think it feels like about, like, 68 degrees. Yeah, I'm standing out here wearing a hoodie and pajama bottoms, taking my dog for a walk. Probably going to go on a hike a little bit later, get a breakfast burrito. (laughs) I fucking love it. I absolutely love it. And then when I get to go back, you know, you visit winter. You visit it for a few days, you know, you fucking, you know, get yourself a hot chocolate, you go skating or whatever, you do your little fucking thing. I love watching people back east digging out, digging out their fucking cars, you know, and just talk every fucking year, just talking about how sick of the this, this snow, you know, and I always want the person on the other side of the microphone to be like, yeah, but it's winter, you know, people just do it. And then the summertime, oh my God, it's fucking heat wave. But yeah, it's the summer. It's the summer. You understand? There's too many fucking people. We put too much fucked up shit in the air and you are going to have crazy weather. It's going to be crazy cold and it's going to be crazy fucking hot. What would you rather do? Like I was thinking the other day, would you rather have global warming or to have it go back to the ice age? You know? Would you rather have the fucking, the water? And I'm not saying whether we're creating it or not. Oh, you know, I think without a doubt, you can't have 7 billion people not have an effect on the planet. I know we are. I went to Asia. I saw it. I breathed it in. I held that tobacco in my fingers. I just sounded like fucking Al Gore. Remember when he ran for office and he was trying to talk to people down in Carolina going like, I, I, I tilled the land. I, I held that the grass in my fingers. Sitting there, why the fuck would you ever say that wearing a suit and wingtips? Bunch of dirty people staring at you like, what the fuck is this guy talking about? Huh? 
What does he have a garden in the backyard of his fucking villa? Um, no, I just saw what the direction we would, but fortunately the population over here is, uh, we're, we're keeping it at bay, but just the amount of shit that we buy, I think, uh, we create more waste or whatever, but I will tell you this dude, like the air quality over there was devastating, fucking devastating. Like I felt like I was smoking five packs a day. Like I had this scratchiness in my throat when I was in Hong Kong and it got even worse in, in India and I'm not shitting on either country and I'm not shitting on the people there because I love both countries and the people were awesome. But you know, you got to admit the fucking air quality is, uh, it's horrific. And right there, that's, that is too many people having an effect on Yeah. It, it happens. There's too many of one fucking thing. That's why, you know, these goddamn diseases, all of this shit that we think are fucking evil and all of that, the Ebola's and SARS, all of that shit is, is, it's there for a reason. So what's the great thing about nature? It's all there. It all serves a fucking purpose. And the purpose of that shit is to keep us in line. You know what I mean? That's what it is. But the fatal flaw is, uh, in nature is us. It's us. We're too fucking smart for our own good. So rather than fucking, you know, a bunch of us dying off, like what happens to every fucking goddamn animal? Something happens. If a disease doesn't run through that, that species of forest fire gets them. You know, we came up with medicine and all of this shit. And there's a bunch of people like I told you, I should not be here right now. I should have died of an, append- an a ruptured appendix when I was in the sixth grade. All right, but they got modern medicine, and here I am, just taking up space, right? I try. I get a Prius. I recycle the water bottles, but, you know, they just throw them in the ocean. I'm just another cunt that shouldn't be here walking around, taking a shit that ends up in a lake, right? I don't even know where the fuck I'm going with this shit, but... um. The fuck? I, I to- totally lost my... Tr- Look at this. I, I'm so fucking stupid. I, I shouldn't even be... Like, if I, if I actually had to live off the goddamn land, I would be walking through the woods, tracking something, and halfway through it, I would get distracted, forget what I was hunting, and I would starve to death, right? Isn't that how it works? I don't know how it works. But anyways, um, I love it. I love that it's fucking snowing back then. There's all kinds of shit going on. I didn't like that uh, that ice rink. Back in Massachusetts, collapsed. Thank God there was no kids out there skating or anything like that. Um, you know, Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. That would have been fucking brutal. But there's all this shit going on back there. I don't, I don't understand how this works, but there's been so much snow that I guess they're having this problem. My heart goes out to everybody back there because I've had water damage in my house and it is a fucking nightmare. It is a fucking nightmare. But basically, there's so much snow up on the roofs, and then it starts to melt during the day, and then at night it freezes. So then what happens is during the day when it starts to melt again, for some reason, I guess it melts down at the surface, which makes no sense. I figure that'd be the coldest or whatever. The snow at the top trickles down. Somehow it gets underneath this bed of ice, and then there's no, it can't run off the roof, and it so eventually just gets absorbed into the roof and starts leaking down. So they're doing this thing where they're starting to clear off the roofs and they put these salt socks up there. They never had that shit when I was a kid. I never heard of that. I guess you take a tube sock, you fill it up with some of that rock salt, and then you just lay it down on the roof and somehow, I don't know, I don't even, I don't get how, I don't get how it fucking works. But there's a bunch of cunts back there because everybody's house is, um, you know, getting water damage. They're in a panic and they're charging thousands of dollars to go up there. Can you imagine fucking doing that? The fucking piece of shit people, some old person who doesn't want to go up there or just in general, if you got some kids and stuff, I mean, you know, you don't go up on the roof anyways, if you got a wife and kids, right? But the fucking, you're not going up on a snowy roof and these fucking assholes are charging all that money. I I, I fucking hate when people do that. Just start price gouging. Isn't that what they call it? Shouldn't the president step in right then? That's what I'd do if I was president. I would find out who the fuck was doing it, and I would audit all of them. Um, All right. This is the Monday Morning Podcast, everybody, from sunny California. Oh, yes. 
Monday morning podcast, and I'm, I don't have shit to do today. After I get this fucking podcast done, I'm going to go play some drums. I got to tell you, I did another one of those goddamn comedy jams. I'll tell you about that after these messages from our other sponsors. Um, oh, fuck. What was I going to tell you guys about? Oh, speaking of that, posters. Speaking of posters. Speaking of posters. Oh, Billy Redface. Guess what? Guess what? Guess what? My Southern tour. I think tickets might even be on sale right now. I'm so fucking excited about this. We're doing the bus tour. We're bringing the bus back. The back. The bus is back. I don't know. Um, I got to think of. I, I need you guys help on this one because I need to come up with a name for the for the bus tour. Um, going down through the south, and uh, and then also I also also I also. Um, mentioned that I was going to start possibly doing, uh, I was going to have a big announcement about, I'm going to start doing a podcast every random Thursday, maybe like twice a month. I don't know how I'm going to do this. And I also need a name for that one. Um, I have a hell of a time trying to come up with that shit. I'm not good at that. I'm good at running my fucking mouth. All right, here we are. I'm on Bill Burr shows. All right, here we go. For those of you who are at your cubicle right now and you got to pretend that you're working and you're actually on a phone call, I'll read you the dates that we got up here so far um, that are on sale. All right. April 10th, I'll be in Miami Beach, Florida at the Fillmore Miami Beach at the Jackie Gleason Theater. Now, I played this place before and I didn't go upstairs. They have Jackie Gleason's office up there with a bunch of stuff that he had uh, left over. You know, they, whatever. when he died, they just kept it there. It's a little shrine. And I didn't know about that till after I left. And I remember someone was like, hey, did you go up and see it? And I was like, I was fucking pissed I didn't because I used to love watching The Honeymooners and I love The Jackie Gleason Show. Um, anyways, April 11th, I'll be in Tampa, Florida at the Ruth Eckerid Hall. Ruth Eckerid Hall. I don't know the fuck you say that. Um, for two shows, April 11th. All right. And then the Southern Tour starts. For some reason, Miami, I mean, uh, Florida is not considered part of the South. Even though they were part of the uh, Southern Tour last time, we did uh, we did Tampa, then we went up to uh, Tallahassee, the Florida State, I believe. So, anyways, April eighteenth, I'm going to be in Savannah, Georgia. Um, April nineteenth, Knoxville, Tennessee. It fucking kills me that I'm going there and it's not football season. That's on my bucket list to go to a Tennessee Volunteer game, man. See that Perina catch out end zone, that checkerboard thing, watching everybody going nuts down there, having a pink picking. SEC football, motherfucker. Um, Chattanooga, Tennessee, April 20th. Memphis, Tennessee, April 21st. And I know what you're thinking. How come you didn't go to Nashville? Because that's not what this tour is about. Everybody who goes to Tennessee goes to Nashville. And then every cunt in Tennessee who doesn't live there has got to drive over to Nashville. Guess what? They're sick of going to Nashville. Knoxville, Chattanooga, and Memphis. All right. April 26th. I'll be in Huntsville, Alabama. All right, April 27th, Jackson, Mississippi. All right, um, May, was it May 1st, Evansville, Indiana. Well, that's not the South. Ah, whatever. We always got to throw one wild card in there. Who the fuck goes to Evansville? Nobody. All right, um, but just to let you know, there's, there's going to be some more dates in there. Um, we got some, uh, I, think, I think I got at least one other Mississippi date. I'm so fucking excited about this. I, did I ever tell you guys how much I love the fucking South? Have I ever told you that? Huh? All the old cars you see that fucking people know how to fix up, driving around out there, all the great barbecue, all these fucking awesome places to eat, the fucking music. I, I absolutely, I fucking love it down there. And I, um, I can't wait to go down there. So anyways, uh, so the tickets are on sale. Actually, the Memphis, Tennessee, Huntsville, Alabama, and Jackson, Mississippi, those are not on sale yet. But Evansville, Chattanooga, Knoxville, Savannah, Tampa, and Miami Beach are all on sale. And uh, I might as well keep going here for people who aren't in the South. Uh, I'm playing the Wilbur in uh, Boston, Massachusetts. I'm doing a whole week. I'm doing a week run. Bill Burr at the Wilbur. All right? Tickets have been selling unbelievably. Um... We're, we've sold 13 shows out, if you can believe it. And uh, we're going to add a 14th. And uh, that's go. Oh, I'm going to tell you, that week's going to be a rough one, you know. Because uh, I'm going to be fucking seeing a bunch of friends. 
I love it. That's going to be so fucking awesome. Yeah, that's what it all comes down to. It all comes down to the fucking friends I see that I meet on the road and the fucking cigars I smoke. Although I've been keeping that in line this year. Uh, going easy on the cigars. Going easy. And the last date I have here is June 26th and 27th. Um, I'm going to be at the Mirage Casino in Las Vegas. And my new hour is coming together. I just did Night of Too Many Stars, and I was backstage going, what do I do? Do I do a couple of leftover bits? Um, do I do a couple of leftover bits from my last special that didn't make it? Or do I go with some new shit? And I just said, fuck it. I'm going with my new shit. Fuck it. I'm not doing another special for another year and a half. Like, I won't come up with another 10 minutes. I know I can do that. And uh, I don't know. That's my philosophy. Fuck that. You go hard. Come out with your best shit. And just have faith that you're going to come up with something else. Um, I hope I did the material justice. It was uh, it was a really fun it was a really fun set, and uh, there was somebody famous in the crowd that was just fucking just nothing, just got nothing, which always fucking kills you. Like they're famous, they know things, you know. But anyway, so that I'm I'm really excited about that. And uh, like I said, uh, Jason Lawhead, Paul Verzi, I got the whole fucking crew coming around again. Uh, we got Coach coming out, uh, Jay Lawhead's Hall of Fame uh, high school basketball coach. Dad's coming along, and uh, we got it all worked out. Couldn't get the same bus driver, which sucks. He's, uh, I don't know, I think we thought it was going to be in May at first, but now it's going to be in April, and he's driving a band, Def Leppard, actually, through Canada. So he can't be there, but that stinks. So we'll get him next time. But he recommended somebody that hopefully we're going to get. We'll have a good time, but blah, 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 and all that bullshit. So um, I need a name for the tour. I'd love to hear your suggestions. And um, let me see what else. You know what the easiest way to do it? Just send it to the, um, which I don't fucking have, of course, because I'm a dumb fuck. Oh, this this podcast, you know what? This was a good podcast right up to the last. It just, it, the whole fucking thing just went off the rails. How dumb is it that I don't even know, I don't even know what the Twitter handle is for my own fucking podcast. Do you realize how fucking, not even sad at this point. Don't, don't you guys, yeah, Bill, yeah, we expect that out of you. We expect that lack of professionalism at the MM podcast. Is that what it is? <laughs> what is it? Oh, go fuck yourself, Bill. You you suck. You just fucking suck. I'm the worst. I don't even know what it is. Somebody find it and then fucking tweet me it so I know what my own goddamn... Po- I can't even find the thing. I follow it. It should be coming up. Is it at the MM Podcast? I'm sorry you guys have to listen to this. There it is. I got it. All right. So at, at the MM Podcast. Um... If you could just tweet me your ideas for the name of the Southern Tour, and um, I already know some of you are going to be a little wacky with your ideas, slapping on the knee there, um, for that or the Thursday podcast. Um, even if I don't use what you have, I'll, that'll be a nice jump-off point for me, and um, I can actually come up with something. I'm going to come up with a real cool tour poster. I'm going to sign all of the posters, and uh, I'll be out there during the Southern Tour, uh, you know, Shaking hands, kissing babies, and all that shit. And uh, all I ask you guys is you just tell us where to go get some drinks and where the cool places are to eat. Um, And we do not want to go to any chains. We want to go to the fucking spot. And if the spot is the shit, if the local mom and pop place is the shit, I promise you I will not tell anybody about it. Because, you know, as much as the Food Network and all them, you know, they have their heart in the right fucking place. Uh... You know, they end up blowing up the, the place and then every douche like me comes to town, you know, with my fucking flip flops and a brochure and then you can't get a seat there anymore. So I won't do it. I won't do that to you. But uh, if you could let us know, that would be fucking tremendous. Um, so anyways, I just mentioned that I'm trying to keep my cigar smoking. I'm trying to get it under control. And uh, it's actually scary how many I've already smoked this year to actually count them. I've smoked 13 so far. And uh, that is a lot. So I'm thinking last year where I didn't even pay attention, I easily smoked over 100 fucking cigars. I must have. Every three, four days, I would think so. Sometimes I go, you know. And then, you know, sometimes I go like 10, 12 days, but then I'd go on like a three-day run if I was hanging with Verzi or something like that. And uh, I know it's bad. I know I got to stop. And there was, uh, you know, 
Leonard Nimoy passing away. His last fucking tweet is, uh, don't smoke, I wish I didn't. Something like that. Live long and prosper. And, uh, you know, the guy was like fucking 83, 84 years old. And even then, if you're laying on your... You'd think, you know, as a young person, you'd be like, ah, man, that's a great run. I'd love to fucking live that long. But when you're fucking facing it at 83, 84, and it's still too early... You know what I mean? I just think if, if you die because of your lifestyle, I think that's a tough one to get over when you're lying there. You know, it's one thing if you just, you know, something tragic happens and that, that's not your... But if you were actually shoveling something into your fucking mouth that caused you to die earlier and spend less days on Earth, I mean, that's got to be a motherfucker. Just the fact that the guy at 84 is, still had a little bit of regret um, about that, that was really an eye-opener. So... I was trying to do one cigar a week this year, which is still 52 fucking cigars, right? That's fucking ridiculous. That's still unacceptable. So anyways, so right now we're about nine weeks in. I should be on cigar number nine, and I'm already up to 13. This should be all the way into April. So I'm actually going to take this month off. I'm not going to smoke any, although a buddy of mine's coming to town Friday, and they already said we're going to smoke. Well, maybe after number 14. Oh, geez, that's a rough one, you know? Um... But anyways, I got to get this thing under control. I'm really going to, like, I don't have any cigars in my house anymore. Uh, the, the fucking humidor is shut down. You know, whatever the fuck you call it, humidifier. Oh, that's for fucking singers. Humidor is for fucking, yeah, there you go. Yeah, that's shut down. I'm not fucking using that thing anymore. And uh, I've been boozing way less. Every once in a while, I got to shut it down. But uh, anyways, let me talk about the goddamn comedy jam, everybody. So last week, I, for the fourth time, I did it. This is my favorite fucking show to do. And uh, this time, we did uh, Guns N' Roses, Paradise City. I dressed up like Steven Adler, one of my favorite drummers of all time. And uh, it was really cool. I watched a bunch of old Guns N' Roses videos just to see how, what he dressed like and just watched how he played um, to do maybe a mini impression of him, which I don't think I did. Because I, I, I'm, I'm not comfortable enough playing in front of a, a, a packed club playing live at this point to actually throw in a little bit of an impersonation of the drummer. I'll, I'll get to that level of comf- comfort because that's what I'm working each time. Each time I play a little bit better, but I'm still at the point of like, oh my God, don't fuck this song up, um, which I always do, which I always do. But uh, this is what was the best that I played. And I'm not going to lie to you, man, for a bunch of comedians, we fucking killed it. For a professional band, I don't know. But uh, it was so much fucking fun. And um, I think I tweeted a couple of pictures of me dressed as Steven Adler. You know what's fucking hilarious, though, was uh, he wore, like, a lot of, like, tank tops and shit like that, which I wasn't going to wear. I'm too fucking self-conscious about my pasty torso. So uh, he wore some vests and shit like that. So I just had a white T-shirt, and I bought, like, this leather vest. And uh, with the wig and the sunglasses, it looked funny, right? But I got to tell you, at one point... You know, I was at home by myself and I had the T-shirt on. I had on the leather vest and I put the sunglasses on. And before before I put the wig on, I looked in the mirror and I looked like Rob Halford. (laughs) You know, not to say he doesn't look good in a vest. I'm just saying I shouldn't shit on him. Um, Yeah, I, I cannot pull off a fucking leather vest. That that is that is a spe- you need you need hair to pull that off, all right. If you don't, you just I can't even tell you what I, I fucking look like. I look like somebody Al Pacino would have talked to in Cruising back in back in the day in that fucking movie. Um, I would have bursted out laughing if it wasn't so shocking how fucking silly I looked. Um, oh yeah, it was bad. It was bad. But anyways, I put the fucking wig on which was actually a woman's wig. You know what's hard to find is a fucking heavy metal long blonde wig. They just didn't have them. It was all black hair, brown hair. And then they had one that was actually the right consistency, but it was this whitish kind of hair. It looked stupid. So I had to fucking comb the thing down. I looked fucking ridiculous. I looked fucking ridiculous. And everyone, like, you know what's funny was when I came walking out, uh, the drummer in the band, Nick, who plays bass when I sit in, he, he, he that when he gets to see... Like, however I'm dressing up is as I walk out on stage. And I saw, and that's the hardest I saw him laughing. So I knew it was a, uh, it was a good thing. So then I just went up and I did a set 
And I basically was defending Stephen Ad- Stephen Adler, saying that he shouldn't have been kicked out of Guns N' Roses. And I knew all this nerdy shit about him, so uh, the crowd really enjoyed it. And all the while, I was reading his autobiography, and I got as much as I love Stephen Adler. I got to tell you, when I read the fucking the book, there was that fucking junky thing where he was not taking response. It's like. Not once in the book did he say, like, all right, I'm going to admit, on this day or on this gig, I was too fucked up to play, and I played really sloppy. It was just he always had some sort of a fucking reason. But what I liked about the book was, because I read Slash's book, and I still felt like he was trying not to piss off Axel because the chance of a reunion was still there, and Axel's so fucking, I guess, touchy or whatever— What I did like about Adler's was he didn't give a shit. And it seemed like he didn't give a fuck either when he was in the band. He had this great story of one night they went out to play. They went out to play live. And uh, Axel goes out to sing and the monitors were fucked up. And he was just like, fuck this show and walked off stage after two or three songs. And as he was walking by Adler, he gave him shit. And was like, well, Axel, maybe if you showed up for the fucking sound check. Things would have sound right, you know. Actually said that. I, you know, whenever I, whenever I see shit, whenever I read stuff about that band, because I fucking love that band. It was just like I don't know. It's just awful watching how everybody just fucking let that guy spin out. Of, at least it seems that way, right? You like how I've read so many of those books? I actually think I know what happened in the band. I'm going to shut up now. I sound like a total nerd. But anyways, um, is there anything else I wanted to talk about this week before I get into your questions? Uh, I momentarily mentioned that uh, the Bruins are starting to play better. Thank God. I mentioned Night of Too Many Stars. Uh, what else? What else? I think that's it. I think that's it. Um, all right. Let's get into, uh, let's get into the, uh, the old questions here for the week. All right. Drummer article. You know, I've seen this before. Somebody sent this to me. It said, uh, hey, Bill, uh, this article has been going around all week. I'm sure someone sent it to you. It's about how drummers are more intelligent. How does it feel to be the exception? Uh, and he says, just kidding. Go fuck yourself. So obviously he's shitting on me. So there's this new study that claims that drummers are actually more intelligent than everyone. So right there, that's fucking ridiculous. That's not true. But it's basically it says that uh, because – well, let me just read this thing. Um According to a collection of studies, drummers are super smart due to a variety of factors relating to being in the rhythm section. So wouldn't that mean like the bass player and the rhythm guitarist or or the piano player, whatever fucking makes up your rhythm section, would all be smarter? I don't know. The news comes courtesy of Polymic. Isn't it the fact that I can't even spell... Well, I can't really say I'm a drummer. It's just a hobby. Um, Who have compiled a series of reports from Oxford and Harvard. Ooh! University is the name of few. What they found was that the dude at the back of the band isn't the head scratcher that you might think he is. In fact, he's more likely to be the smartest of them all. For example, researchers at Stockholm's Karolinska Institute found that the drummers who kept a tighter rhythm also scored better on 60 question uh, intelligent test. This is a reflection of better problem solving skills, which creates a positive impact on those around them. Or they're just a smart person who decided to play drums. So naturally, they would score higher. I, I don't know that I buy into that. I think that that's a uh, – It's. I think this article is a reaction to all the the, the drummer jokes. Um, you know, for those of you who don't, that aren't in the play music or whatever, musician, or whatever, I guess is what you'd fucking call it. <laughs> for those of you who play music. Hey, for those of you who play music um, – there's a bunch of drummer jokes, like, uh, what do you call somebody who hangs around musicians, uh, drummer, you know, uh, how do you know there's a drummer at the door, the knocking speeds up, I guess that's one of talking about our timing or whatever, but like, it's, there's a lot of like drummers that are fucking morons who just bash shit and they're, they're not actually musicians. So I think that this is a reaction to that, to say like, not only are the musicians are actually smarter than the fucking lead singer and lead guitarist, you know? I think that that's just what this is. So do I buy into it? No, I don't. I don't. I think that there's, um, you know, I think that there's super smart people that decide that, all right, whatever, get into music. Some of them are drummers. Some of them play the fucking oboe. But I don't think, uh, I got to admit, you know, I've met a ton of drummers. And it's just like meeting people. 
Some are cool, some are assholes, some are smart, you know. I think it's just, I I, I don't buy into it. All right, whatever. Here we go. All right. How to not wreck your eyes. Okay, Bill, you are 100% correct. Finally. If your eyes are trying to adjust for flicker, it wears out, wears them out big time. Well, that sounds very medical. Um, for this reason, you never need, you never read or study under a single fluorescent bulb. A buddy of mine lost his pilot qualification this way with only one fluorescent bulb. Your eyeball kills itself trying to dilate and constrict at an impossible speed. Oh yeah. Cause it kind of like flickers. Cause I don't understand fluorescent bulbing. And I also don't understand why whenever I go to Home Depot, I accidentally buy those every fucking time. I look all over the box. I can't seem to find where it says fluorescent. Anyways, oh, what, what is a regular light called? If it's not fluorescent, what's the good one? The nice warm one that makes my eyes go, ah, I can see. What does it make your eyes build, do, Bill? Ah. Anyways, my, uh, my buddy's eye doctor told, told him that if you have to study under fluorescent, make sure it's at least two bulbs or you'll wreck your eyes uh, as he did his. Hope this helps. Well, you know what could help is somebody help me fucking read that goddamn thing. Um, all right. Franchise. This is hilarious. I'm finally allowing enough time to get through all the goddamn reads, and now I have nothing to say about any of them. All right. Franchise. Bill, not sure if anyone asked you, uh, not sure if anyone's asked you think before. Once again, people not proofreading. I already have a difficult time reading out loud. Bill, not sure if anyone's asked you what you think before, but if you could own a current sports franchise, which would it be? Or if you had to create a franchise for any sport in any city, which would you pick? What would you call the team? What city could really use a team in particular in a particular sport? Thanks. Um, all right. Let's see here. So I think somebody's asked me this before. All right. If I could... If I could own any sports team, I'm like most sports fans. I would want to own a sports team from the city that I'm from. And back in the day when I was growing up, I would then go to be the greatest owner of all time. And not only would we win a championship, we would win the most championships of in the sport in, during the time that I owned the team. You know? Um, but Unfortunately, that dream has died for me because not only do I have the money, but every Boston team has gone out and won championships. And, uh, you know, so I, I can't really I, – am I going to be a better owner than Robert Kraft? No. The people over at the Red Sox, right? The Bruins, the Celtics, I, you know, what am I going to do? I guess right now the team that I'm most concerned about will probably be the Boston Celtics, and I would want them to uh, win a bunch of championships so they stay out in front of the Lakers because um, the Lakers have, you know, they've just won so many goddamn championships since the 70s. It's insane. And, of course, they count that one from the, 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 the BAA or whatever the fuck it is, which is so fucking ridiculous, but such a classic L.A. thing. I actually think it's funny that they do it. Because everybody out here is padding their resume, you know? No one's a fucking waitress. They're all an actress. Everybody's a director and that type of shit. So, all right, you want to say you got you got 16? We won an NBA championship before there was an NBA. Oh, did you? How'd you do that? Because we're in L.A. Um, so maybe that one, I think. But um, I think um, if I had to own any team, I would... It would probably be a team in a city that I love, uh, a team that was probably great when I was a kid but isn't anymore. I would maybe uh, the, turn the Pittsburgh Pirates around or the Baltimore Orioles, even though they had a great year last year. Um, let me see. That's a damn good question. It's a damn good question. I think, uh, I don't know, there's so many fucking teams I hate after a while. If you watch enough sports, you fucking hate all of them. You just like your team. Unless they just stink every goddamn year. I don't know. You know, back in the day, I was thinking like uh, owning a Canadian um, hockey team because they haven't had the cup there in so long. It'd be cool to bring it back. Obviously, it wouldn't be the Canadians. And Maple Leaf fans are such fucking shit-talking cunts. I wouldn't want them to see any success either. 
And I got to be honest with you. We always lose to them in the gold medal game in the Olympics. And then they talk all this fucking shit. You know what? Fuck all those teams. Fuck them all. But if I had to pick one, uh, maybe I'd bring Edmonton back. Calgary I like. There was a time, believe it or not, that I actually used to like Vancouver. Before we played them in the finals. And then I, I fucking hated them. But enough of them have left that I think they have a new personality. But they still have the Sedine twins there. Um... Oh, I don't even know what. Why would I not like them? What, because they're good? I don't know. Yeah, I, I think I would just be a hometown thing or like the Pittsburgh Pirates or something like that. Or maybe bring a championship to Cleveland, I think, would be great to make the Browns. Yeah, maybe I'd take the Browns. i make the Browns, but I would tell people to stop fucking eating dog biscuits and that type of shit. That would be, that would be the trade-off. You have to come to the game, dress like a human being. You don't go there and humiliate yourself, going, row, 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 thinking you're actually affecting the defense of the other team. Like, oh, my God, fuck this 360-pound tackle that's going to be pulling that I have to fucking get crushed by to force the run back to the inside. Fuck all that. There's a fat accountant eating a dog biscuit barking at me. That's really messing with my focus, man. Um... Or, you know, maybe bring a football team to L.A., but you know something? I don't think they deserve it. All right? Fucking Southern California fans, all the way up to San Francisco and Oakland, they're fucking horrific. Not all of them, but just that they're horrible fucking people who bring violence to the game, and they they beat up people who wear different uniforms. I mean, just, I mean, somebody got shot at, like, a fucking 49ers Raiders, like, preseason game, and what they'll fucking assholes at the Dodger game did that family that father with a family with who had a couple of kids that guy guys he's brain dead basically he's got permanent brain damage they took the they, they, they took this these kids dad away with his kids right there there's no excuse you saw that he was a father so fuck all of them they don't deserve a fucking team there you go um that answers that answers your question all right name change or not all right this is a crazy one. Hey, yo, Billy. I have heard you talk about ISIS a few times on the Monday morning podcast, so I thought I'd ask your opinion on something that's been bothering me for a while now. My husband and I had our child in the fall of 2013. Throughout my pregnancy, we spent a lot of time trying to come up with the perfect name and tried to make sure it was a name that no one could make fun of. Then why don't you just go with Susan? Kathy, Karen, all the classics. No one's going to give you shit about those. After months and months of debate, we finally settled on the name, Isis, after the Bob Dylan song. I don't understand what happens to two parents between being a child and being picked on and bullied and all that type. There's just something about it. When you become a parent, you just forget, and you buy your kids stupid clothes, Please beat the shit out of me, clothes. And then you give your kid a name like ISIS. Let's just say ISIS, the terrorist group, didn't exist. All right? Isn't that like a, that's like a, when I was a kid, ISIS was, I got to look this up. That was like, uh, that was some superhero that was a woman. Almighty ISIS, ISIS, ISIS. Right? Well, people who like name their kid like Thor. All right, ISIS. Woman, it's my search. Hero, this is going to put me on an FBI fucking watch list because ISIS and Hero are in the same thing. Um, images for ISIS, Woman, Hero. ISIS, TV series, 75, 76, I remember that. she go, almighty ISIS, 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 and then she, it was like, it was a ripoff of Wonder Woman. ISIS, DC Comics, here we go. Um, here we go. My slow ass internet. Here we go. Isis is a DC Comics superhero. God damn, look at her. Woo! Holy shit. I swear to God, man. Does any woman look better than a woman that a guy draws? <laughs> um, all right. Isis is a DC Comics superhero, as well as a separate Egyptian goddess also living in the DC universe. The recent superhero character is modeled closely after the main character of The Secrets of Isis, a live-action American Saturday morning television program that served as the second half of Shazam. I remember that. 
Shazam Isis Hour. The television character appeared in the late 70s DC comic publication. Yeah, I remember this shit. So that to me, that, that that's what it was. Um, all right, let me go back to your question here. So, uh, well, as you know, a few months ago, after she, a few months after she was born, this stupid terrorist group who just so happens to go by the name ISIS is all over the news. ISIS is actually a beautiful name. I shouldn't be making fun of that. Um, I don't know all of the political aspects of the group, and I really don't care. All I know is that a year later, these people are still all over the news and don't seem to be going away anytime soon. I don't know. These terrorist groups, they're kind of like boy bands. You know what I mean? They're fucking hot for a couple of summers, and then they just kind of go away, you know? Like, um... Remember, like, like Hezbollah is like fucking the Backstreet Boys at this point. You know, and ISIS is like, uh, not the Jonas Brothers. Jonas Brothers is like Hezbollah, right? Or the Al-Qaeda. I'd say they're more like the Al-Qaeda. And ISIS is like, uh, ISIS, is the, whoever the, the, those fucking people are, whoever the new one is, right? That's who they are. Okay, all I know is that a year later, these people are still all over the news and don't seem to be going anywhere anytime soon. We tried ignoring it, but every time we have to tell someone our daughter's name, we either get a weird, confused look or we get someone who tells us she should start going by her middle name. Wow. Who would say that to a mother? We have thought about... I guess I'm old enough that when I, when I heard ISIS, when I heard the... T- just to let you know, when I heard ISIS, the terrorist group, I laughed at the name because I was thinking, like, that's that superhero that was uh, a ripoff of Wonder Woman. You know what I mean? Anyways, we have thought about having her go by her middle name until all this blows over, but she just doesn't look like anything other than an ISIS to us. So we decided that would be too weird. One solution we have thought of is to change her name to something that is similar to ISIS so she can still use the nickname's shortened version of her current name, but we won't have the word ISIS tied to her legally. So my question is this, do we have, do we let everyone else win or go through all of the legal and financial burdens of getting her name changed or do we keep her name as it is now? Continue to put up with all the side comics and dirty looks and hope, who would think that someone would name a little girl after a terrorist group? What state do you live in? And hope the terrorist group ISIS doesn't turn out into any bigger deal than it already is. Thanks for the advice, and as always, go fuck yourself. Um, I say you stand strong at this point. That's what I say. I say you stay with the name. It's actually a beautiful name. That's a beautiful name for a little girl. ISIS is a beautiful name. Um, I don't know. I don't know what to tell you. You know, because then it's like, all right, so we're going to be stubborn and then Oh, gee, what a fucking situation. Because then it's like, your kid's going to be young enough that if you switch it now, it's not going to remember. But if you go too long, that would be weird if all of a sudden somebody changed my name to like Chuck. Hey, Charlie. Charlie! Oh, yeah, that's right. That's my name. Hey, how are you? What's going on? That would be weird. Um, Yeah, that sucks. That sucks. And it also sucks that they're making ISIS out to be this huge fucking deal. You know what I mean? That we're focusing all these billions of dollars on this little ass fucking group, right? And meanwhile, over here, you know, you have people that took took control of the food supply and from what I've read have essentially turned it into poison. Isn't that terrorist behavior right here? You can't focus on that. You can't focus on bankers and all these fucking cunts. How about that shit? I swear to God, I don't understand why we can't just fucking build shit in this country. Fix our own fucking shit. And look, you know electric cars, you know the batteries and shit. They're, they're going to do just as much damage to the environment as oil and gas are. You know they are. But here's the deal. If we, do, if we fucking switch over to that shit and then we don't use oil, they fucking go bankrupt. And if they go bankrupt, all these cunts that are literally on our side can't fund the money into these terrorist groups. And then they fucking go away. Right? And then you can have a kid named, uh, you know, Hezbollah. Is he? Batting next, Hezbollah Saunders. Hezbollah Saunders. Um, all right. Yeah, so I don't know. That's, that's a, that sucks. I actually, you know something? I kind of gave you shit in the beginning, but I actually feel really bad for you because um, you love your kid, you love the name, and then 
That's all one thing. Um, I don't know. I don't think ISIS is going to be around too long. I just think that they're uh, they're too desperate. You know what I mean? They're too desperate for attention. Just the shit that they're doing. They're really kind of hacky. Cutting people's heads off, lighting people on fire. It's always some sensational fucking thing. You know what I mean? Like if they were a comedian, they would just be, they'd have a catchphrase, I feel like. Or they'd, they'd wear the same clothes every time they went on stage and they fucking, you know, they, they're, they're trying too hard to be evil, I feel. That, to, to, to think they're actually going to, they're going to last. They fucking allegedly, I mean, who knows? Once it goes through all the fucking propaganda on all this shit, that person they threw off the roof was allegedly a gay guy and they were throwing him off because he was gay. Just like fucking animals. I just don't think they're going to last. I, e- I think even they are too fucking insane to last is what I'm hoping. You know? And um, I don't know. That's a rough one because I think my whole life I will remember the name Hezbollah. I will remember the name Al-Qaeda. Will I remember ISIS, though? I, You know, there's a big boy band out right now. I don't know the name of it. Oh, man, that's a motherfucker. I don't know. I don't know what to tell you. You know what? I might have to phone a friend. What do you guys think? Let's take a vote. All right? You got three things. Come up with a name for my Southern tour. Help me come up with a name for my Southern tour, I should say. Help me come up with a name for the Thursday podcast. Um, the Thursday, Monday morning podcast. Um, and help this woman make this decision. Ah, that fucking blows. Imagine if you had a kid, you just named him Eddie, some regular name, and then there's some new terrorist group over there, and Eddie somehow stood for something. You know? Eviction of, you know, fucking, I don't know, interlopers, except it worked with Eddie. (laughs) Anyways, um, anyway, shh. Anyways, uh, so that's the podcast for this week, everybody. Came out right in about an hour this week. Uh, I'm psyched that my Bruins are starting to play well again. You know, trying to stay ahead of the fucking Panthers. Um, I'm really, uh, I don't know what to tell you. I'm actually thinking about that sports question again. I would like to start an upstart league, an upstart basketball league. There's just too many fucking teams already. I would like to do that and bring a team back, have bring back like the Rochester Royals. You know, that'd be fun. You know something, actually thinking about that, now that I rethink this question, um, seeing how fucking awesome the fans are when I went to an Oklahoma Thunder game. Is that right? Is it the Thunder? I can't even remember. Some sort of weather. I don't watch hoop. Wow. My brain is fried. Um... Yeah, Oklahoma City Thunder, yeah. Just seeing how fucking awesome their fans were and just the stadium that they built, which was just bare bones, nothing crazy like the Staples Center and some of these other places. And the place was so fucking loud because uh, you don't have that wasted space of luxury boxes and everything, so it's really contained and it's, like, super loud. Um, I think it would be fun to uh, bring a professional team to a place like Rochester or something like that. I think that would be really badass now that I uh, rethink it. And uh, I'm psycho into fucking college hoops right now. Um, and it actually kills me when I was in New York. I didn't, I, I, last second I looked up to see when St. John's was playing and the game was already going. It was down at Madison Square Garden and I could have fucking gone. Ah, that fucking bugs me. Anyways, all right. I'm, I'm, I came, I came in like a lion and went out like a lamb. By the way, March 2nd, this is my 23rd anniversary as being a stand up comedian, living the dream. Coming up on a quarter century. What am I going to buy myself for my 25th anniversary? Um, all right, that's the podcast for this week. Go fuck yourselves. Um, I hope it doesn't keep snowing back east, even though it makes me laugh. But uh, that is it. I will talk to you guys soon. Uh, rest in peace, Leonard Nimoy. Um, and th- 